Uh, I'd like to, if, if anyone has a, a question, please uh, raise your hand and let me know and I'll send her over. Uh, while the microphone's heading to her, I, I have one question for you myself. So everyone in here is, 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 is connected in some way to manual therapy. And so uh, it's out of my scope of practice to administer drugs, of course. But um, you mentioned the learning component of the placebo effect. And so I'm wondering what, if you could speak to the possibility if someone has an unpleasant experience with a manual therapist, and then they come to see a new manual therapist that maybe would take a different approach. Well, in our experience with drugs, particularly in the, in the field of pharmacology, of course, uh, surgery as well, um, the previous experience is very, very important. So previous experience, I mean, if you experience the different uh, negative treatments, uh, actually the uh, success of what you uh, try with the new treatment, for example, is much lower. Uh, if uh, you experience it, if a patient experienced uh, different positive treatment, uh, the success of the new treatment is much higher. So uh, learning, after all, when you give a placebo, when you perform a fake treatment, uh, um, what uh, uh, you have received in the, in the previous, uh, you know, in the previous history of your uh, treatment, particularly for pain, uh, uh, plays a really very, very crucial role, for Thank sure. You. And the question was back here. Hi, you nearly asked the same question that I do. So I was interested in when people with chronic pain often have multiple f negative pharmacological responses, so they just can't find the right medication. And I was wondering, most of this is based on the WHO analgesic ladder, which suggests we start at the bottom and we work our way up. So would you suggest there might need to be a change in the use of that ladder to get a more positive response for people so they're not trying drugs that don't work in order to get to something that does work? Uh, well, to answer both questions, I mean, um, well, we don't, know, we don't know exactly whether or not there is a cross-modal uh, transfer uh, from a pharmacological response to a manual therapy response, for example, this is a very interesting point, because uh, if you uh, received many uh, uh, negative treatment with pharmacology, we don't know exactly what happens uh, when you replace a pharmacological treatment with uh, a manual treatment. And vice versa, I mean, if you uh, tried different uh, positive treatment, uh, uh, with a different pharmacological agent, we don't know exactly whether or not there is a very good response when you try to perform a sort of manual therapy, not necessarily the real therapy, but the fake therapy as well. Uh, the cross-modal problem is a very important point uh, in routine medical practice because uh, this means that uh, actually by performing a pharmacological preconditioning, uh, we can change uh, the, 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 the approach from pharmacological uh, uh, administration, which means administration of a pill, administration of uh, uh, an injection, uh, you know, and we change from uh, the classical pharmacological approach, the uh, classical pharmacological administration to a different procedure, which could be manual therapy, could be acupuncture, could be a sort of a surgery simulation, you know, we don't know yet. Thank you. And we have a question online. Um, she'll read that to you in just a second. So the question is, from what I understand, the placebo effect lasts a few hours then subsides. Is the same, does the same go for the nocebo effect? Uh, well, uh, we don't know exactly a duration. Uh, duration is a very difficult issue because uh, um, when we want to study the mechanism, actually we study, we study uh, a patient under strictly controlled conditions, you know, in the lab uh, for uh, several hours uh, in the afternoon uh, or from the morning to the evening, you know. So we don't know exactly uh, whether or not there is a long duration for our placebo response. 
Uh, the, nocebo, the time course of nocebo response is pretty different. This is not surprising because when you give positive expectations, actually uh, there is a given response, a given positive response, but when you give a negative, uh, when you induce negative expectations, there is a very fast response. This is not surprising because anticipatory anxiety is very important for survival. So usually the time course of the nocebo response is completely different from the time course of the placebo response. When you give a placebo, uh, there is a huge variability. When you give a placebo, uh, you can get a response after, sometimes after a couple of hours, uh, uh, some other times after uh, six hours, you know. But when you give a nocebo, which means when you give uh, negative verbal suggestions and you induce negative expectations, actually you have uh, a nocebo response within minutes, which means uh, less than half an hour, usually. Right, thank you. We have another question right up here in the front row. Nick, we got a mic for you. Hey, Dr. Benedetti. Uh, I have an online question from a friend, uh, Benjamin Burke. He asks, why is proving effectiveness of a treatment beyond placebo an important thing? Uh, and how right. does, second part is, how does this reflect on branded therapy modalities? Uh, a brand a brand therapy is important. I mean, if you give a, if you give a placebo, you tell it is a, a, I don't know, a new, a new name. It is a, it is a, a keep this coupon therapy. You know, this is the name. Uh, but uh, the, the effect is completely different if you tell the subjects it is aspirin. So it means that uh, you can induce, you can modulate expectations in different ways. If you, uh, if you try a new name, and if you try uh, to give a, a, a brand name, uh, it makes a huge difference. Uh, a placebo, and if you, give, if you tell a patient, uh, now I'm going to give you a powerful painkiller, and if you tell a patient, now I'm going to give you uh, morphine, uh, but in both cases, you give fresh water. If you tell a patient I'm going to give you morphine, usually the magnitude of the placebo response is much larger. So the brand is very, very important. Not only the brand, but the price as well. Yes. <laughs> if the pill, if the pill cost, if the pill cost uh, uh, in dollars, uh, I, I don't know, sure. dollars, two sure. dollars, it's much less effective if you tell the patient it costs five dollars for sure. <clears throat> there, is a, there is a paper which was published in the JAMA, uh, if I'm not wrong, a couple of years ago, uh, probably le less than a couple of years ago, one year ago, uh, and uh, there, is a, there is a completely different brain response uh, if you tell a patient this costs $2, this pill costs $2, this pill costs $5. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it, Kind of a follow-up. I guess it's a special case of a special case of the branding question. A few years ago, Ted Kapchuk reported, I believe, um, an experiment where they gave a pill labeled placebo, and they got an effect. Is that an accepted result? Has that been replicated? And if so, how do you explain that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The open label placebo. Open label placebo works. Uh, usually it works because there is an unconscious component. I had no time to talk about uh, uh, two different kinds of placebo responses. There are both conscious and unconscious placebo responses. Conscious placebo responses are when you expect something, when you trust your doctor, when you believe in the therapy, you know, so you have positive expectations. Uh, but there is a different kind of placebo response, which is an unconscious placebo response. Everything is unconscious. For example, when you give an aspirin pill, an aspirin pill has uh, an active uh, drug inside, of course, but there is a, a psychosocial context as well. And the psychosocial context of an aspirin pill is that it has a shape, it is round, usually. It has a color, it is white, usually. So after repeated association, completely unconscious association between the shape 
and the color of the peel and uh, 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 active drug inside the peel, you can bet that every peel which is round and white can produce the very same effect. You don't need to trust your doctor. You don't need to, to believe in the therapy. This is a typical unconscious placebo response. With an, open, uh, with an open label placebo, actually, there is a small unconscious component. So even if you tell the patient, this is a placebo, but uh, there will be, you know, there will be a sort of, uh, for example, a re reduction in pain in the next few minutes, well, uh, uh, some people respond with an unconscious mechanism, completely unconscious mechanism. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Hi, I work with Parkinson's clients and have recently introduced a visualization and manual therapy combination in um, anticipation of uh, medical treatment in hopes that by opening up the mind and the physical body that the treatment would improve. How would you put a clinical trial around something to that effect? Uh, how to, you mean how to run a clinical trial with a manual therapy? It's very, very difficult. Sometimes it's really impossible. Uh, how can you uh, perform a fake uh, a physiotherapy? I mean, how can you perform? This is a huge problem in, uh, in physiotherapy. This is the reason why. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, I, I'm very delighted, I'm very happy to be here, is that usually we talk a lot about... Uh, uh, about the placebo effect, the nocebo effect in pharmacology, in surgery, but uh, we uh, know very, very little about placebo in physiotherapy, manual therapy, you know, uh, or some uh, uh, complex rituals like acupuncture, for example, no? <clears throat> because it is very, very difficult to be sure that it is a real psychological effect. Uh, for example, how can you do? Uh, how can you uh, perform a clinical trial with a placebo, physio placebo physiotherapy? It's not very easy. I mean, you can treat. Uh, you can treat uh, if the pain is on the left leg. You can treat the right left, <laughs> the, the right leg actually, but it's not. Uh, it's not correct from a methodological point of view, because the patients realize that. Uh, that uh, it is a fake physiotherapy, of course. <laughs> so this is very easy. It's very easy with pharmacology. It's very easy to devise a placebo pill. It is very easy to devise a placebo surgery. Uh, for surgery, there is a completely different approach. The approach is an ethical approach. Is it ethical to perform placebo surgery, which means fake surgery? You have to anesthetize the patient. Uh, you pretend. You cut the patient, to, you pretend to do something, but actually you don't do anything. <clears throat> then the patient recovers, uh, undergoes uh, uh, antibiotic therapy. But for physiotherapy, I think it's very, very difficult, very difficult to run a clinical trial with the good placebo uh, 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 manual therapy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Everyone? <laughs>